listening to Spiritual Growth Tools on the radio, helping you understand the blocks you have in your life to being happy, with a wide variety of guests to help you better understand the problems you're having in your own life. Whether you're depressed, poverty-stricken, suffering ill health, or confused about how to take the next step, discover products, services, and information that will enable you to grow with grace and address issues that are preventing you from happiness, health, or abundance. Go to spiritualgrowthtools.co.uk and find out what's holding you back. Hello, everyone, and good evening. You are listening to Spiritual Growth Tools on the radio, where we discuss spiritual growth, what that means, and how it can move, help you move forward through the blocks that you have to health and happiness. I'm your host, Caroline Nettle, and today's special guest is Kat Kasbah. Welcome, Kat. Hi. Well, thanks for having me today. You are so welcome. So, if I can just tell you a little bit about my guest, Kat. She's been a medium and psychic for over three decades, and you only have to look at testimonials to see how accurately she can convey messages from the spirit world. She teaches classes with One to Listen and has her own radio show, which she's actually just come from just now, which is how we first connected. So, Kat, I think for my listeners who perhaps haven't heard of you before or don't know who you are, could you just um, tell me a little bit about how you started, what the 30 years reading spirit has been like, and, and what got you to today? <clears throat> Thank you, and, and yes, I would love to. It's it's interesting because when I hear someone say 30 years or over 30 years, you know, I was actually 11 years old when I had my first real experience, well, you know, where where I can remember and I was in a classroom at school, somehow starting to smell smoke and knowing I heard an alarm, like a fire alarm. And I had known inside that my, my house was on fire, which was several miles away from the school. Wow. So I had to convince my teacher to let me go to the office to call home by, by um, unfortunately being sick all over her desk because she wouldn't let me leave, but this is true. And one thing led to another, and then you know they say, Caroline, when it when a te- when when the student is ready, a teacher will appear. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> I have been blessed with a lifetime of of amazing teachers and mentors, and you know I truly uh, my my upbringing was was very Catholic. I I am a recovering Catholic always. <laughs> But uh, my mom, my mom is the one who said, you know, who used to teach me and and talk to me at, at great lengths about the Holy Spirit. And so I went and and I I spent many years trying to piece the you know piece the puzzle together and and become almost at one with everything that I knew. So it made sense and. You know, um, I have a Virgo rising, so I feel very detailed about certain things, and I have to feel okay with things in my body before I, I bring them out, and and one thing led to another, and, and here I am. So I, I'm, I'm very grateful, and um, I, I'm, I'm really glad to be here. Wow. Okay, that's so fascinating. And, you know, last week I had the Barefoot Doctor on, and he said he can remember being conscious as a baby, which was really amazing. And he just knew that he had to, you know, follow his passion and, and you know, help the world. That was his big driver, yeah. if you like. So, but did you, from right from the very beginning, right from the outset, did you believe what you heard? Was this vision so convincing that you just knew you had a good connection or...? I felt that I was very, very curious even even prior to that age. And my father used to tell me, you know, you you know things because I, I acted like I was ninety years old when I was five, you know, and I I, I used to engage and, and being a curious Gemini, I asked people a lot of questions because I always saw an underlying side to, you know, I could hear people say things, but I knew they meant something different, and I, I unfortunately, you know, learned some lessons earlier in my day, which I'm now teaching my own daughter, in that, you know, sometimes people don't want to hear the truth in that moment, so I had to, you know, there, there's always um, the navigation of trying to be tight-lipped or maybe not knowing what to say. I think it's only now in, in midlife that I can honestly say that I, I have a hard time holding anything back, of course, but... Yet at the same time, you learn how to temper or moderate it accordingly. And back then, 
being raised in a, in a large Italian family, uh, you know, we, we had a lot of connection uh, in our family to New York City, and I knew a lot of things I shouldn't have known. So, and, you know, my father had to cover my mouth all the time. I'd say, wait a minute, that looks, you know, <laughs> I would call people out, you know, and, and that's probably not, not safe in an Italian family. But in any case, that's really where it all began. Excellent. And, yeah, I, ha I had a very um, similar curiosity, and I, well, my story is at the age of, I think I was four, I don't really remember this, somebody told me this happened, I stood in church behind a woman, and I told her that her husband was going to die, and then right. he died wow. a week later or something, and my yeah. mother was not happy, and we don't talk about it in my family, but, you know, she was like, you don't say that sort of thing in church, bless her, I think she was absolutely horrified, so I learned straight away not to, you know, speak it out loud, and, and I'm, you know, nearing 50 now, and I'm just getting the, to the point where I'm thinking, do you know, it's time that I start speaking my truth, and, um, yeah, sometimes I have a few blocks to that, like everybody else, but yes, I, I definitely resonated with like, asking lots of questions and knowing things that people weren't saying and things like that. Yeah, that's definitely something I did. But um, yeah, one thing that I'm really interested in, because I've, um, I've pretty much been doing psychic readings and stuff for nearly 10 years now, but I wanted to ask, do um, has, has the message changed in the last 30 years? Is it still pretty much the same stuff that's coming through, or is it changing because the, the, the earth is changing right now? You mean the personal messages that I receive for other people? Yeah. Is that, red, has it changed? Is there a thread running through them, or is it... Yes, I, I believe wholeheartedly that I, I, yes, the messages get deeper, uh, they become different according to perhaps the energetic flow or the force. I think we all, you know, we're all very much connected and yet very unique. And so every single reading for me is very, very different. And yet as I mature over time, you know, things change and, and things perhaps get deeper. But I always, because I had such a, a, an intense, and, and I will say this with, with a really a hesitation and not because I, I spend a great deal of, of my time in solitude and I had a very, very serious um, childhood and, and early adult years in that I was alone all the time studying, you know, training, learning. Um, and so I have so many bits and pieces of all of that, in, you know, encompassed, you know, so who I, who I, perhaps get information for on on one level or, or from from something I've taken in against somebody else who perhaps is you know it's so different every every day I would say and yet at the same time I am I am you know who I am and and I feel there are I, I go through moods I think just like every other human and that you know some days I'm a little deeper and some days I want to be funny and and I think but it but it depends moment to moment you know if someone's coming to you with a serious issue I think we have to really truly relate and I and I to where they are in that moment so I think I change a lot. Okay, I, I do. Yeah, no, and and that's kind of good to hear because I, you know, I think if it was the same all the time, but. Are you getting any messages from, from spirit about what we need to do today, you know, with the earth changing so much, or is it, or, or does that not come into your readings at all? I feel there are moments, specifically at this time of the year and, and come January, I think I look at, um, I, I try to do some New Year predictions uh, for the masses, you know, as far as the bigger picture. And yet, <clears throat> this is the time of year that we all consider, you know, what is going to happen next year. But since I, I altered the Psychic Cat show over at One Two Radio in recent months, and, and I had rec I, I moved my, my day from Wednesday to Tuesday, and change for myself personally is something that I'm like, no way, I can't do this. You know, I, I want to stay in the same place. If I could sit in the same chair for the rest of my life, I would be very, very happy. But, but, but outwardly, it doesn't appear that way. And, and so I changed the show format, and I went out on my own. And so 
I tend to look at the bigger picture when I'm, I'm doing some more of the gallery readings and, and things like that. As far as the world and what we need today or now, you may ask me in this moment, and I, I feel very much like it's a time of self-actualization and really digging, especially with the Saturn and Scorpio cycle. I mean, it just... I think it really has, it's really made us dig deep in, internally, and I think that we're really all coming to a place of, of knowing who we are so that we can better connect, you know, with others. And I really do believe for the first time in, in you know, uh, uh, over 30 years of speaking to other people, I think this is the, the, the biggest period of self-actualization that I've ever seen. And I think people want to improve themselves to, to be able to go out and, and better connect with others and make the world a better place. And I, I'm touched by that. And yet at the same time, I feel we're going to take this moment of self-actualization and, and really bring it out and be able to connect again in a better way. So I think that's what everybody's doing right now. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. And, you know, I'm, I've just really noticed when I'm doing my healing and my angel readings, the messages are, are really kind of getting to the point where it's like, and now is the time to do this. You know, before it might have been, you know, in the next year or next year. Now it's like, no, come on, it's it's time to do it. And you were given this lesson because, you know, that's, that's who you are and you've been given the tools and it's just your choice whether or not you want to get up and and. and yeah, change, I suppose. Change, that horrible word that we all hate. But I don't know, I've, I've always had a drive to make the world a better place. It's bigger than me. I can't change it. If I try and ignore it, it gets louder. So, yeah, I just I think we've all got an internal something, and it's just tuning into that, isn't it? Yes, it really is. And I try to pay attention to what feels good in my body <clears throat> as far as where I bring my myself or you know and, and I think being psychic or as psychic as you know we are much more in tune to what takes place you know in, in in our outer environment so to speak and yet we have to always be aware of what's coming through because there's that moment of um, I guess OCD so to speak you know we get that obsessive compulsive drive in that okay what are we looking at and why what are we feeling and why I feel like it's very very challenging to bring our gifts or ourselves to an environment that feels unsafe or undesired or you know that that type of thing so I pay a, I pay very close attention to how my body responds now where maybe 20 years ago I'd be like this doesn't feel right but I'm going to try it anyway <laughs> I, I don't do that anymore <laughs> I remember that yeah how do you tackle that yeah. Oh, we'll just go here. We know this horrible thing's going to take place, but we're going to try it anyway because we are here to learn. You know, I think I'm, I think I'm, I'm very. You know, I think a lot of us want to want to try everything and and live a life that includes so much experience and, uh, yeah. you know, paying attention to ourselves is more important today than it was then. Yeah, absolutely. And um, can we talk a little bit about your skill as a magical intuitive? Yes, of course. Um, thank you. And I have no explanation whatsoever except that it was my life dream to be a nurse. And every single time, and my mother is, a, is an amazing nurse. There are many nurses in our family. And every time I tried to go to nursing school, I wound up with either another degree or another state license. Or um, I have completed much of it, and uh, I am a, a um, I'm a registered dental assistant, and I, I and and dental hygienist. You know, I, I I was on the path of dentistry because my father and mother said this would be a good idea, and so from there I wanted to be a nurse even more so because I was bored very quickly, and I was still doing my readings and. You know, I taught aerobics, and I was very into physical fitness and health and nutrition. And so everything in my life path always brought me back to trying to complete nursing school. 
no matter what I tried to do. And, and you know, as a, as a 17-year-old child starting college early, my father sat me down and he said, you know, you are going to figure out that you are just not the person to go and clean, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> people's bodies. <laughs> he said it in a much more disgusting way, but he said, I just can't see you being that. And so I had taken care of a lot of um, elderly people, and I worked um, and volunteered for many years in a nursing home. And I, and I worked as a recreations coordinator for them, which was spectacular. And so all of my life, I always tried to, do, to, you know, to, to go into nursing. Well, it never worked out that way, and um, I wound up somehow... I, I, I know this is a, a God-given gift, and I take absolutely no credit for it because I still do not have, I don't have a solid answer for you. I actually can scan internal, you know, the internal um, body for color, and I, I find blocks, and I literally find myself being blocked when I reach a certain point. Um, I look for, there, there are shades and coloring that I see and feel and lumps and bumps and, and things like that. Or, you know, I, I, I am blessed. I am by no means, um, you know, with an understanding of why this happens. Mm-hmm. And, and, um, I really don't like to do anything that I'm not sure of. So for some reason, you know, I feel blessed to be able to do it. And and recently, you know, in recent years, especially since, you know, I I, I work at OneToListen.com, I have an enormous amount of respect for the CEO, Mark Hudson, and everyone attached to this, this family that... I am now going to celebrate five years with very, very soon, and I'm so very excited. But I feel that since I've connected there, um, I was, you know, how do you get into somebody's physical body on, you know, through a tele, the, the phone, you know? And, and so, but we do, but, and, and you do. And, and it's an enormous blessing because energy no matter how we connect, you know, is very, very real. So I have grown a lot in that way because I think when we are, well, I don't know if it's like I have an Aries moon and, and I, if I'm challenged, I want it more and, and I try harder, but I do connect through, through the phone and I, I'm able to, scan, you know, scan um, unusual things and, and I feel blessed by that. But I, again, I'm, I'm not a physician by any means and I wouldn't really call myself an expert at, at any one specific thing, but at the same time, I, I feel, you know, every time I help one person even get onto something to correct it, it's really all I'm here to do is guide them to the proper care. And, and I'm, I feel really, you know, honored about that. And I also know that it can be taken away from me at any time. So I don't ever want to take it, you know, that for granted. The way you said it was just so eloquent, and um, thank you for saying it that way, because I'm a body talk practitioner, and I'm I'm kind of saying this a little bit to laugh, but when my patients come in and they're not, you know, very conscious, shall we say, and um, my body's going, oh, my kidney's really sick, Mm -hmm. what are you doing? And they're like, oh, I'm fine, or I'll be crying my eyes out, and going, yeah, I'm feeling deep sadness for you, and they're like... You know, I'm not feeling anything, and I just know that my body is, you know, expressing their pain, and that, and it goes as soon as the session's gone, and it, it's usually not overwhelming, but it does make me laugh a bit, a little bit, and I, you know, I do yeah. some sessions as well, and people keep saying to me, well, how do you do that? And I'm like, I have not the faintest idea. You don't, right? <laughs> and isn't it weird? Do you, Caroline? Do you find in yourself like I'm laughing right now because I. I was actually working with some digestive things um, in the middle of the night with someone, and and I, do you find when you scan someone or that when you really get to the bottom of of an issue for somebody that you feel the same, um, you know, even for a couple of days following, you know, I, 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 I feel this. 
it, oh, you know, wow. the symptoms. No, I'm really, I'm really lucky as soon as the session's finished. And I mean, sometimes it's incredibly painful. <laughs> I, I, I understand that. But I just, I just say, you know, take it away from it. It's not mine. I'm just, I'm just, you know, right. it. So I, I, I'm very lucky that the angels never, although sometimes I get extremely tired after, you know, if it's been a really big session and they've got cancer or, you know, it's a really serious disease, I can be really tired. But most right. of the time I find it quite energizing. Yes, I totally agree with that, too. I was just going to say, I, I'm not a very tired person, and I actually, you know, <laughs> I am energized by by the work I do. I, I think because it's our passion, right, we we tend to feed off that passion, and, and the more I do, the more I want to do, and, you know, I, I get all this, cat, are you ever going to rest, and so many people out there are so kind, and they're just like, are, you know... I, I worry that they worry about me because I feel like, okay, I may look a little crazy to you and that's okay with me because I don't know how to operate in any other, on any other, you know, pace or at any other pace. And I actually get down if I get too much rest or who want, you know, I, I feel like I have no time to waste. So I love when people care. And yet at the same time, it's like, please, it's okay. You know, I promise I, it makes me feel bad. That's one thing that does make me feel bad because I never want anyone to worry. Oh, that's really sweet of you. I think that might be the burger in me, actually. Um, okay, I've just realized that I haven't told people how to get in touch with us. If you would like Kat and myself to perhaps ask some questions of the angels or spirit, then you're very, very welcome to phone in. It's the U.S. number, and it's 347-327-9223. That's 347 347- 327-9223. And um, if you want to connect with uh, me on Facebook, then go to Spiritual Growth Tools on Facebook and say hi on there. It would be really good to connect with you. So um, what was the other thing I wanted to ask you? Oh, yeah, somebody asked me today, um, if somebody dies, like say now, how quickly is it before we can connect with them in spirit? Well, this is... <laughs> Uh, this is a touchy subject for me because I only speak to dead people when when they speak to me, and I don't look for that. And um, I do believe it takes time. However, I have seen um, I have been able to connect with people. I know they say you know professional mediums always say. It takes time. Some say months, some say one year. They all have their little time frame. I, I have seen visitors who, who have only been, you know, absent for seven days. I um, So I, I don't know the answer to that, Caroline, with all honesty, that there is one answer because I feel every soul is different. I feel it takes time to transition. And um, that's not somewhere that... It has to come to me in a reading. I'm a, I'm a practicing clairvoyant and medical intuitive, and I and I am well versed in astrology, but never would claim to be an astrologer because there's so many amazing people out there. Um, but I, I do know it. And and as far as mediumship goes, that's still a subject for me that um, I am cautious with. Because I believe that I don't, I feel we're all in control of our own domain, so to speak, in that the spirit world is, you know, is the spirit world and the, and the, the our earth is, is something different as human beings, we're something different. And so when souls want to connect to me, they just come and I immediately get goosebumps and they talk to me, but I don't actually go the other side. I, I don't look for it, you know. Um, I mean, it has to happen authentically, and it, and it does happen very often, more so lately. Uh, so I, I think, you know, to answer the question, I'm, I'm mixed. You know, I'm all over the board with it. And I feel like, you know, I had, my father came to me seven days after he passed wow. in a dream that I could touch him at the edge of my bed and said, do not go to the... I, I used to stop for coffee uh, 4.30 in the morning. I went to the gym for many years to run. And I would meet a group, and I would stop for coffee every single morning at 4.10. And he said, do not go there. 
so that was my first, and he, he was only gone for seven days. So I was like shocked. I woke up, you know, heated and, and, and I, I, I jumped and okay. So I didn't go to the, I listened to his message and I came back and there was tape all over the place and there was a massive shooting there. It, I would have been there at the very, you know, somebody, somebody was actually shot and killed. So it was a very profound experience. That is true. And so that was, you know, and then I, and then you hear other stories where, you know, you really shouldn't reach somebody until you give them time to transition. So I'm mixed. Yeah, I'm exactly the same. It was just something that somebody asked. And, I, you know, for me, I never go and ask for somebody, but I do sometimes get, you know, visitations where people want to give a message. Okay, Kat, well, we seem to have a caller, and I'm going to say up front, I hope I know how to deal with this technology. But let me see if I can't get this caller on. It is number ending 987. Hello. Hi. Hi. Who are you talking to? Caroline, it's Trenna. Hello. Oh, hi, Trenna. How are you doing? I'm all right, thank you. How are you? I'm really good. Welcome to Spiritual Growth Tools on the radio. How can I help you today? Well, I wanted to ask you and Kat. Um, uh, I've recently been diagnosed with uh, neurological disorder. Um, and I'm a bit of a loss. I don't know what to do about it. And I wondered if you had any insight you can offer me. Sure. Kat, do you want to go first? Trina, do, can you please tell me your birthday? Thank you, Caroline. Yeah. It's February the 20th. So, so you said you're recently diagnosed with a neurological disorder? Yeah. How old are you, sweetheart? 40. Here, I feel like something from from roots, you know, more more um, perhaps genetic, um, and yet at the same time, I feel that there have been signs of this that have been changing. Did, has that happened yet? Because I feel a tremendous. Have, has it changed your symptoms or anything like that yet? What do you mean changed my symptoms? Like. Have you seen new symptoms, or I feel like there's going to be a change in your symptoms? And, and I'm going to say something. Go ahead. Well, there have been different symptoms, and they've come separately. Okay, very uh, good. And, and Okay, go ahead. No, that's it. Um, I mean, because there's various. I feel, I, okay, there are various symptoms, and, and, I, and I feel that there I don't know why, but I feel like there's going to be more change and yet, at the same time, they're showing me this divine light. So I am going to say there is also, there is going to be a female yeah. who is who has a, a it, she, she feels like she has an air quality about her, like I do see an air sign female, who's going to be very, very helpful to you on, on this journey of healing. And, and, and I do feel... At, at the outcome, or let's, let's just say by June of this coming year, um, 2014, I do feel it's going to take a bit of time to get, to get you to a very comfortable place, and yet at the same time, I feel like they're going to be able to really, con you know, control and, and maintain your symptoms to a level of, of where you're going to be um, almost, you know, at times feeling very healthy, and at, at other times, it's like a little malady that's you know, how, how it comes and goes. So I do feel a divine light. I do feel a female helping you that you're going to meet by February of 2014. And by June, I think you're really going to be on your way to, to tremendous healing. Okay, thank you. Um, do you know how I'll, I'll know this woman? How I, I, feel like this, uh, I feel like this woman is someone that is either going to come to you through, um, I feel a male there's a, there, there feels to be a water sign male physician, someone someone who, who, with water, a lot of water, like a, I, I do feel Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio energy in this male, 
and this person is actually going to tell you about this woman, and that's how I feel it's going to play out. And, the, and, and I feel the reason that it's going to take until February uh, divinely is because there's something that you have to do now first that you're working on, that the treatment is very, it's all in divine time to me, so the treatment is very, for, for the next couple of months, whatever path you're on is very important to what's going to work next. Does that make sense to you? Um, kind of. I mean, um, yeah, kind of. So um, what I got straight away, Trana, is about 20 minutes before you were born. And when you said heritage, Kathleen, I was just like, yeah, it was, it was a real sense of going back into, like, I got... I don't know, five generations of the females on your mother's side. Mm -hmm. And um, I got a real sense of you having almost a paddy fit, like being just having this surge of intense anger. I'm going to make up, because I'm not sure about having to be born, about having to come into this life, but that's what I got, this intense um, feeling of, I'm on the wrong planet, or I'm, I'm in the wrong place, or this can't be happening to me. There's some, something around not wanting to be born. Um, and that also got for you, like, the way I see it is a thunderstorm in your head. And, and when I see that, that to me means that there's lots of neurons firing, and I feel really, um, what I want to say to you is find some really soothing um not exercises, that's the wrong word, um, behaviors, um, you know, things to do. So like yeah. meditation and um, just really um, whatever it is that can get you centered again. And I feel grounded and center would really, really help you right now. Yeah. I don't know if that makes any sense for you. Yeah, I'm working on that. Thank you. Good. Okay, I'm going to pull a card for you. I've got these wonderful... Archangel Michael cards, um, help me pull a card for Trina because they've got a little prayer. So I'll just read the prayer out. And interestingly, we get the person you're asking about is trustworthy. Thank you for helping me have faith so that I can open my heart wider in my relationships. I'm grateful for your protection, ensuring that only trustworthy people are in my life. And I immediately get that's about the people that are going to help you to heal. So really having faith that the right people are going to turn up. I really, see, I really feel that too, Caroline. I really feel there's one specific man, male, and one specific woman that's really going to show up. And I, and, and, and I, I totally understand, you know, where you're going with, with her anger. But at the same time, I feel like this is going to be an, an extremely enlightening process, especially when, when, of course, more challenging to say and do today because of, you know, there's always like that shock you know, that shock factor, but at the same time, I think over the next six months, you're going to be really um, feeling at peace with it, and, and having a, there is divine light around you, so I really do feel that it's going to come to a very manageable place. At the same time, I think any time the sun, like when the sun's in Aquarius and the sun is in Gemini, that's my timing for you to really connect with these people. Okay, and um, did you say the man was a physician? I do see a water sign male that's a physician. A doctor? Yes. Okay. Thank I do. You. Okay. I've been wondering to a, a, a woman. Yeah, I've been wondering about how much to work with doctors and how much to work with healers. I think well, I think the male is going to be a physician and I think the, the um, woman is going to be a healer. Okay. Thank you. I think you need both. There's a really childish part of me that's going, pick me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. How funny is that? Anyway, okay, does that help, Trina? It does. Thank you. It's something to, uh, to think about. Thank you very much. You're so welcome. Thank you for calling Spiritual Growth Stores on the radio. I'm sending you lots of love. Thank you. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Bye now. Bye now. Bye. Carol. Bye. Caroline, I, I feel that's another huge topic right now. Okay, go. Because um, she asked a question about should I use a doctor, should I use a healer? And I believe that the universe is, um, you know, has blessed us with 
many different forms of healing modalities, including traditional medicine. So I am a big believer of um, both because I have seen both sides of not using one or the other, and I've seen, you know, um, I'm not doubting. Uh, I, I'm a big, huge believer in miracles. I preach it every day of my life, and yet at the same time, I do feel, on um, you know, scientific medicine sometimes has answers that we can't find in the holistic community and vice versa. So I think it's always wise to seek both, especially when we're diagnosed with something that could affect us, you know, um, on a, on a longer-term uh, basis. Yeah, and, you know, I have been known to be slightly outspoken in my views about uh, traditional medicine, I would say, but I still know if my arm fell off or I, you know, was diagnosed yeah. with something I didn't understand, I would, I would find out from the doctor what's what, and then I would think about how I was going to um, go about doing my healing, and sometimes that's with, you know, with medical profession and sometimes it's not but you know in, ter in body talk terms you know a lot of the people that come to me are people who've been right the way around the system because in the UK um, you know going to see the doctors free but also they give you drugs and they cost a lot of money and you know sometimes you put on you know a huge bag full of you know medicines and I personally think that's really toxic but anyway and um, I get a lot of people who've been round and round and round and nobody can give them an answer so the yes. to me, and I, you know, most of what I do, ninety percent of what I do, is emotional releases. On you know, my dad didn't love me, or my mum didn't love me, or I haven't grieved my grandfather properly. You know, and it's manifesting as shingles or cancer or whatever it's man whatever your body's choosing to manifest it as. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think it's actually really <clears throat> you said that because I think sometimes it can be really. Um, challenging to believe that they know best, but sometimes they really do. <laughs> I say if we have a will to be here, then we're exploring every possible, you know, vessel for healing. And I have lost and have seen saved many people in my personal, you know, world that, um, Without one or the other, they, they wouldn't be here. And with one or the other, they would still be here. So um, that's my feeling. And it, it touches me because, you know, unless it's, I mean, there are some of us out there who, you know, when, when my father was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer at 59 years old, he looked at me and he said, you know, I'm doing nothing. And I said, all right, you know, I want to do to probably kill him prematurely at that point, but I was like, what do you mean you're doing nothing? He said, I'm ready, and you're not talking me out of it. I said, all right, that was it. So in, in, with a conscious decision for, for the life that he, someone like, he, you know, he had lived and lived and lived in, in probably ten lifetimes in one, he was tired. And, and, and you know, so when I, got that, when I get that message, I'm like, all right, back down. You know, 90 days later, he was gone. But, if it, but, but in another extreme, you know, when we have a condition that um, requires certain types of, of treatment, if we're not, you know, is it, what is it going to hurt to at least explore certain things, you know, if it's if it's in the world and, and meant to be here? So I have a, a very, um, obviously, I have no judgment. I'll support what anyone, you know, what anyone wants to do and choose to do with their health care, but I'm a fighter. I'll, you know, <laughs> I'll speak my mind <laughs> before you do. <laughs> so. But, I, you know, that kind of brings me on to the, you know, the conversation that I've been having quite a lot recently. I seem to I seem to know a lot of people who have lost, you know, young teenagers or their parents. or It just seems to be going on a lot around me at the moment. And I honestly don't believe that anybody goes by mistake, even if we take our own life. I genuinely believe, you know, and I've seen a couple of occasions where people I love have tried and not succeeded and I, I just to me that's just they're not it's not their time to go and, and that's you know but I, I you know we as a society we're not very good at allowing people to go when they want to. I think I think what you just said is really important. Thank you. Yeah um, close to my close to my, my spirit. You know, I I spent six months in intensive care with my daughter in a neonatal intensive care unit, and I, I have, you know, 
when you go through that experience six months around the clock and you see life and death to um, innocent angels, you know, yeah. I, I've seen every side of it, and yes, I am tied to that, and I believe that there's a reason for everything, and yet at the same time, I've seen, you know, babies that were under one pound be saved and have normal lives because of, of regular care, so, you know, traditional care. It's amazing, isn't it? And, you know, we, we hear so many things. There was that guy who went back to Vietnam. He was an American soldier, and this man comes running up to him, and he'd had basically half his brain blown out or something, but he'd survived, and his brain, yeah. you know, as, as our brain does, it just kind of adapted to it. And I was like, if you, if you look for it, you can see ways in which the human spirit is just so strong. And it's amazing. It is, for sure. That's why I have hope for the human race. I think we're <laughs> doing some ridiculous stuff to our planet at the moment, which, by the way, is my home. So uh, please stop doing that. But, um, no, I just think we're so... In, in the deep, fundamental pit of our stomach, we know that we have to do better. And, and that's what gives me hope. Yes, I agree with you completely. <laughs> so what do, you, what, what do most people come, with you, come to you with um, for help? What, what, is, what is the one thing that um, you know, people come to you with? I, uh, I, oh, I don't think there is one thing, but I think relationships are, are huge <laughs> on the agenda. And um, I, I feel like it's very, there are, you know, I have a wide response to this because, yes, relationship, and yet this year it has been more about personal healing and, and really um, learning internally how to manage our relationships in, in, by improving who we are. And I think, again, but getting back to self-actualization, to be able to connect better or to learn the difference between um, codependency or, you know, he what is healthy for me and breaking patterns. I think that's been a huge um, issue. I want to, I've been doing this way forever. You know, I want to change it. I want this, I, I never want to get in this kind of situation again. Can you help me fix this? And then really watching people come through amazing evolution or personal evolution in order to go on and have um, healthy relationships and um, I, I've seen a lot of great change this year like that. So I would say that's my answer for now. Number one relationship, yeah. I think that's why I, I wrote the book I wrote, which is called Where's My Man? <laughs> <laughs> What's my life purpose? And other questions that angels um, can help me with. Actually, if anybody's listening, that's available for free download at yourangelreadings.com. Yeah, I just wrote it. And basically the whole book. That's awesome. Thank you. Well, it's more of a pamphlet than a book. But anyway, <laughs> but it's all about how, you know, it's really about learn to love yourself exactly as you are. Because how can somebody possibly love you if you've got, you know, a false smile, false hair, false teeth, false breasts, false, you know, blah, blah, blah. Then, then who are they going to fall in love with? I, I find that really shocking sometimes. But anyway... That's one of my opinions that I'm quite um, staunch on. <laughs> well, that's okay, and I and I I feel I'm I don't have an opinion about what makes people you know feel good about themselves if they learn how to love themselves more, or perhaps there was some old scarring that has to be um, removed and and corrected. And I'm not talking in a physical sense. Of course, I'm I'm going to a more emotional or spiritual level in that. You know, <clears throat> we become over time um, a better person. I think when we're striving to be better, uh, you know, we, we come to a certain place and we say, okay, well, now we can connect with someone who is healthy. And, and they say that like attracts like, but in actuality, um, <laughs> there's another process to getting to that like attracts like because for a very, you know, for a process in everyone's learning experience, through romance or, or, or interpersonal relationships in today's society, I feel sometimes, you know, we see that whole um, givers attract takers. And there's an opposite, you know, there's like that magnet, like, you know, and, and when we attract someone who is like ourselves, it is probably a topic that has, you know, demands more self-consideration is like, okay, am I going to like somebody like me? Or, you know, why do I always go after, you know, the good girl wants the bad boy and the good boys want the bad girls? And 
that kind of thing. So I think there's a lot of analyzing that goes through that process too. Absolutely. I just I would like to apologize to anyone that um, you know has done work on themselves. But it's not that I don't approve of it. I just yeah, it's just my opinion that you know it's easier to be more natural and and be who you are exactly who you are. And I think you know for me this comes from a living in a society where I'm shown all the time perfect women. And then you see how they're airbrushed and we're supposed to look like these airbrushed <laughs> people. And, you know, I, it does make me quite angry. And I, just because of the work that I do with women trying to make themselves, you know, women are... Better on the inside. Exactly. And we're so powerful. We've just given it away so in so many ways. And it's just so exciting. And, uh, you know, I'm loving watching the men come forward supporting. You know, there seems to be a change, I think, mm -hmm. in the society of, like, men are stepping forward and supporting women who are stepping forward. And, it, yeah, I'm, I'm really hopeful that there's going to be some big, big change. I agree with that. I actually have been blessed with some amazing male friends. Um, throughout my life. Some of them have been in my life for many, many years, just as many years as I have been a psychic. And um, I have to say that if you ask any one of them, they will tell you that they no longer care. It was like, it's like out with the 90s and the, in the early 2000s, you know, really looking at the whole person. And, and that goes for every age category, too. I think we're seeing more younger men with older women, and and um, instead of the other way around, you know, I think I think there there's been a little shift that way too. I, I know they use that word cougar or whatever, and, it, and it's not my, you know, my choice in life. But but I know a lot of women, you know, I'm seeing that whole role reversal, you know, thing in place right now too. It's very very interesting. Very quietly, but yeah, I agree. It's definitely, definitely some huge changes going on in society. So I can see the time. So, Kat, how do people um, get in contact with you if they want to work with you? I am always uh, available exclusively at onesyoulisten.com. And I am, Caroline, I, I'm going to be really looking forward to 2014 in bringing more of my classes to the forefront of the public. I've been teaching at onetoacademy.com for a few years now, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to doing it. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm quiet about it because it always takes me a little time to, to be perhaps more broad with what I do and what I offer, and we, we challenge the, the waters a little bit, and, and it's worked out very, very well for a few years. So I want to go broad with my teaching this year, and I'm very excited about that. So, but it's always I'm always over at one to listen for readings. Okay, and what thank you, you for teach? that. What do you teach? I teach an actual. Um, it's it's a certification series um, that is something that is very close to my heart. Um, it is. Um, my kaleidoscope series, it was given the name uh, kaleidoscope in recent years, and uh, it's something that I've been, I started working on when I was 17 years old. It's a divination, it's my own divination that, that was created over the decades, and I have been putting it in book form for about a year now, and I've been teaching it uh, for three years. It's a three-part certification series of psychic development with the tarot, and um, we are working on cards, and, and um, you know, it's something that, because I was raised Catholic, mm -hmm. I read the Bible many times over, and the whole thing about, my whole mission in life, originally becoming a psychic, and maybe it was my own personal sense that people are lacking, you know, faith hope, love, charity, and they happen to be the four elements or so-called um, suits that I'm using in my deck, faith, hope, love, and charity, and that people really need to, to know that it's safe, and people need to know that it's okay to have a belief system outside of what they can touch or feel, and that's how I feel I, I've survived my entire life, knowing that and perhaps looking at it in a different way in that in, in these you know how you know caroline when you're in a spiritual world when things prove themselves to you over and over again you're not you're going to fight it to your death that it's true right yes so i i wanted to, i wanted everyone to experience the same feelings and um so that's that's what what 
basically my class is all about learning this divination that I tailored over the years and, and it's proven itself over time to be, to be very reliable and I have amazing students out in the world already using the, the system and they all they all know it's it's my own little spin but um, somehow you know blessings from above it works so we're, we're using it. Well, it sounds amazing. And can can people outside of the U.S. join them? Is it on the internet? Or? No. It, yes, it's over at one two academy dot com. Um, by the fifteenth of this month, I will be posting the dates. It's it's a three part series with a certification system, and, and, but but at the same time, um, there are different levels, and and so I will be posting series one and series three at the new year and I'm offering it all over I had students from all over the world and, and, and we successfully connect over at one two academy dot com. So I'll really be looking forward to that. Sounds amazing. Wow, sounds really good. I might even look into that myself. <laughs> no, it's it's a lot of fun and um I have you know there it's for anyone beginners or professionals uh, and, and um, it's, all, it's, it's almost like our, it's a language in itself and yet it brought everybody um, a lot of personal development and a lot of professional development so it's something I'm, I'm very proud and, and humbled actually to be able to share with the world right now. Fantastic, well congratulations to you. And um, so what's 2014 going to be doing then, apart from what you've just mentioned? For the world? Yeah, and you and... Uh, Caroline, I, I think I'm, I'm going to be... I want to, for, for the world, I, I do feel a lot of healing, and I do also sense that we're going to continue... Um, I think we're going to go a little, and I, I, I almost hate saying this out loud. I think we're going to go away from tradition a little bit more, and I think we're going to really start exploring some alternative things, and I think we're going to see more alternative lifestyles and yeah. and things like that. And I and I feel very excited about it. For myself, I just want to be <laughs> as normal. I'm going to seek some sense of normalcy, though I know it's never going to exist. I'm going to be working on my two books uh, that, that were started many years ago. And um, I'm also excited to um, be at One to Listen and coming into my sixth year there. I'm, I, I'm you know, I'm out there. I, I love what I do, and that's who I am. So, I, And I appreciate you so much for being me to join you today. I, I really enjoyed it and getting to know you better too. Oh, bless you. No, it's been really, really good fun. So I think um, on that note, I'm going to say, well, thank you. you know, I can't thank you enough. That's just been so interesting for me and hopefully for my listeners too. And um, just wish you all the love in the world. And, and you too. And you'll have to come back and join me on the Psychiatra show over at One Two Radio some Tuesday morning. Yeah, I'd love, love to, to have you. Fun. Great. That would be really fun. So thank you so much, and um, I wish you well in everything that you do and everything that's coming up, and I send you lots of love. So You too. Thank you, Caroline. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye, Kat. Okay, so next week, what a show that was. I really enjoyed that. Next week we have, have as a guest Michelle Carter, and I'm really excited to have her on the show as well. She's dedicated her life helping anyone who is seeking to find a better life, inner peace, and healing. She discovered the amazing power of energy releasing through her own struggles with ill health, and I'll be asking her about that. And now she spends all her time helping others to heal. She's helped me with some really deep emotional scars, and I'm really looking forward to introducing her to you next week. So with that, I'll say thank you very much for listening to Spiritual Rentals on the radio. I hope you have a really fun week, and I will speak to you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Spiritual Growth Tools okay? live on the radio. For more information, go to spiritualgrowthtools.co.uk.